Okay, uh, Mr. Bossett here. Uh, we're talking today about uh, angles as we start our geometry unit. Uh, as a kind of a review of a few things, we've got a couple of new formulas maybe for you uh, today. Uh, as a reminder, the angles inside a triangle, they sum, they add up to 180 degrees. And we can use this uh, to write equations uh, for this one here. Uh, I would say that 32 plus 28 plus the x has to equal 180. And so um, I want to take advantage of that to be able to write equations and solve the fine missing pieces, in this case, uh, the x. Um, here x would equal 120 if I solved. So we know that that, that angle measure is 120 degrees. A couple other relationships, right? If we have, typically, if we have a line and it's divided into two angles, split up into two angles, um, right, those two angles may uh, they will add up to 180 because on the side, one side of a line is 180 uh, degrees and the relationship between the two angles that add up to 180 is that they are supplementary. We know that this is one side of a line is 180 because if we went all the way around, we know that that's a circle and that's 360 degrees. So halfway, basically, would get you the two angles that make up one side of a line, and they are supplementary. The word that goes along with that is complementary. Uh, here I have two angles uh, that are kind of made up, making together a right angle or 90 degrees. So two angles that add up to 90, we call those complementary. Uh, here I could write in an equation that if I add these two angles together, I would get 3x uh, plus 10 minus 10 is 3x, and that would equal 90. So that would tell me that x is 30. Um, and then if I, I was asked to, I could uh, say, well, then this one is 30 minus 10, or 20 degrees. This one obviously would be 70, but here it's 30 times 2 is 60 plus 10 is 70 degrees. So we can use the knowledge of relationships of some of these things in order to write equations and solve algebraically. Um, here's a situation where we have two lines cross. We have, uh, if we're thinking back to last chapter, right, this would be a system of uh, equations that they don't have the same slope, these lines. But that's not the relationship that we're looking at right here. The relationship we're talking about is the fact that they're on opposite sides of this crisscross. And their relationship is that they are vertical angles, right? So 2x plus 40 and x plus 80, they would both, um, if I say that angle 1 here is this in red, well, 2x plus 40 is supplementary to angle 1, so that would add up to 180. And x plus 90 is supplementary to angle 1, too. So since these angles are supplementary to the same angle, and one has the same measure both times, these two must be equal. So we have this relationship. We can set 2x plus 40 equals x plus 80. Solve the equation algebraically. Welcome to chapter 3. We get x equals 40. And then we can use that to plug that back in up here and find that each of these angles is 120 and that it would actually give us to be angle 1 would be 60 and this angle over here uh, would also be 60 degrees too because it's vertical with angle 1. So vertical angles, angles opposite sides of the crisscross are congruent. All right, Pythagorean theorem, we have a lot of knowledge base with this, right? A squared plus B squared is C equal to C squared. A and B are the legs. Right, A and B are the legs, the sides of the right triangle. C is the hypotenuse. And the relationship is not between the sides, but the squares are the sides. 
So 3 squared or 9 plus x squared equals 25. And if we solve that, we find out that it's x is plus or minus 4, which has to be positive 4 here. But we're going to talk about a couple of special triangles, okay? So these are right triangles as well, so the Pythagorean theorem will work. But this one is a 45, 45, 90, because it has a 9 degrees of right triangle, and it has one 45 degree angle. So this other one will also have to be 45. It's complementary. And so this is a 45, 45, 90. We can also call it, since it has two equal angles, the sides opposite of those angles will be the same, so they're equal. So this is an isosceles right triangle. And isosceles right triangle, since they're the same length, and the Pythagorean theorem works, we can generate that if the two legs are both the same, they're both x, uh, this is going to be x root 2. If you did, this, if you did the Pythagorean theorem, uh, the two legs would be the same, right? So x squared plus x squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So it would be 2x squared is the hypotenuse squared. And when you square that, you get uh, x times root 2. So whatever the leg happens to be, you don't need to go through this. Since it's, they're the same, the other leg is the same. And the hypotenuse is going to be whatever that length is times the square root of 2. Right? Another special right triangle is a 30-60-90 right triangle. 30-60-90 because, right? We've got a right angle, right, a right triangle, one angle 60, one angle 30. So 30, 60, 90, right triangle. They also have a special relationship between the sides. Usually we call the smallest leg x. Uh, the, the hypotenuse is going to be double that, or 2x. And the long leg is going to be whatever the short leg is times the square root of 3. And that relationship holds true in any 30, 60, 90 triangle. So that the short leg is x, the hypotenuse is double that, twice as long, and the, the long leg is going to be whatever the short leg is, x times the square root of 3. That will always be the case for 30, 60, 90. All right, so uh, take a couple of minutes and try to find x and y here in this 45, 45, 90 based on the notes we did. And then after that, we're going to try to find uh, x in this 30, 60, 90 down here. So pause it and then try to figure it out. So we're finding x and y here. Okay, so... Uh, again, I kind of superimpose x, x, and x root 2 from the other chart uh, from the previous notes page. Um, and so since this one is 8, that's 8 is going to really be x in this case. So y has to be the same. It has to be 8. And the side here that I did call x in blue is going to be 8 root 2. Now, if you uh, did the Pythagorean theorem, you would still get the same answers, okay? This is like square root, this is would end up being root 128, uh, which is 8 root 2. And at 30, 60, 90 below, uh, I've made the, the, fr the small leg 5 root 3, so the long leg, the hypotenuse rather, is double that. It's 10 root 3, that's twice as big as this one. And this one should be whatever this is times the square root of 3. So if it's x root 3, and x in this case is the short leg is 5 root 3, so it becomes 5 root 3 times root 3, which is 5 times root 9, or 5 times 3, or 15. So this would be 15 there. And we'll do some practice here in class. Okay, we know that the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. Um, and so multiply the base times the height, and they meet at a right angle, and then times a half. If you cannot 
find the height or you don't have a height, uh, you can use something called Huron's formula or Hero's formula. And the area of a triangle is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where S is the half perimeter. So if you find the perimeter of a triangle, in this case, let me look at this one. This perimeter is uh, 36, so the half perimeter would be 18. And then A, B, and C are the side lengths. Again, I don't see a right angle. I don't have a height. Um, so this was developed so I can substitute in uh, S is 18 times S minus A. Let's say A is 6, so that would be 18 minus 6 or 12. S minus B, let's say B is 12, so 18 minus 12 is 6. Apparently this one can't be a triangle. <laughs> All right, let me do this. Uh, that's a mistake. Okay, let's make this... Um, make this 16. That makes our half perimeter. Oh, man, that's, that's a bummer. All right, I'm going to make this one um, 10. I'm going to make this one I should have known that, right? Because I can't. Yikes. It can't be uh, 6, 12, and 18 because the two have to be bigger than the other one. All right, make, let's make this one 15. All right. So the, the half perimeter is now uh, 20 or 16, and 15 is 31. Oh, no, that doesn't work very well either. All right, let's make this one. Eight. That looks fine. All right, eight, ten, and fifteen. That sounds good. All right, so twenty-five, thirty-three. Mm. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna try to make this a little easier for us to work with. Now we're ready to go. Sorry about that. Uh, so the perimeter is 32, so the half perimeter would be 16. So we've got the half perimeter 16 times 16, S minus A would be 16 minus 8 or 8. S minus B would be 16 minus 10 or 6. And S, S minus C would be 16 minus 14 or 2. So if we multiply these together, it looks like we're going to get uh, 16. And notice there's a 16. Okay, so that's uh, 16 times 16 times 6. So this looks like it's going to be 16 root 6. And that would be my area of that triangle. Yuck. All right. And then uh, we have also a, a formula for area of equilateral triangles. And you could divide this up, right? Because if it's equilateral, it's equiangular. So all three angles would be the same. They'll be 60. So you could divide this up, right? Drew that straight down, this really divides it up and makes it to, into two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Because this angle here would be 60, this angle would be 90, and this angle would be up here would be 30. And you'll notice in 30, 60, 90, remember the small leg, 4, and the hypotenuse is double that, 8. And then this one we could figure out the height is really um, 4 root 3. And that's where the root 3 comes into play. All right. But the side is 8. 8 squared is 64 over 4, which is 16, and then root 3. 
uh, if we th did the base, which is 8, times the height, which is 4 root 3, uh, that's 32 root 3, and then half of that would be 16 root 3. So this is just a special formula that you could use for areas of equilaterals, or you could see that you could divide it up into two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Um, and that would give you the height, right? That height is the long side, the long leg, which is x root 3. So since the smaller leg was 4, this is 4 root 3. That can give you the base and the height for the triangle. All right, a lot of information, a lot of uh, kind of review and some new things, but we're going to do a lot of application on working with uh, triangles and um, and writing equations out of those out of those relationships that we know. All right, thank you. Namaste.